And um, as you all know, the Synagogue Church of All Nations and the man of God himself have been known in his usual nature of being kind hearted. And his mission is to make sure that he spent more on others and less on himself. And that is why people have been coming from nooks and crannies of the world looking for help. And right now, I want to listen to life experience for this family. And God bless you as you listen in Jesus' name. En este momento se ha finalizado la sesión de testimonios y ahora vamos a escuchar una experiencia de vida. Continuamos. A woman and her two young children were seen outside the synagogue church of all nations, distraught and in a very emotional state late at night. The attention of the Emmanuel TV team was called to their case and they came to find out what had happened to this family. Let us listen to them. My name is Christy Pua. I came from Indonesia. And who are the two people standing beside you? This is, they are my children, Frederick and Blessing. So can you explain the reason why you have come to the Synagogue Church of All Nations this evening? I'm looking for the favor from man of God because we have been living here. We are running from village because they accused my husband as a murderer, killed my his 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 own father, and then after after the next few months the niece died and they they accused my husband also as a murderer that killed that niece. Then is why we are running from village to this Lagos without anything. Even we managed to sell the one that left in the house on for transport now we are be become like a beggar in this village in this very lagos we don't have another place again to stay that is why we're running here we want to look for the favor from man of god who is the father of the children his name is john ken egesi from Imo state i've been married for him for the past 16 years so how did you meet with him we are meeting in, in Indonesia when he was uh, doing his business. He was uh, selling garment like that. He export uh, some clothing. After some years, we are, we are married. Now he tell me that uh, I should come to introduce with uh, his family in Nigeria. Then I am here for, for the past five years, living in Imo State with him with all the suffering with all suffering in even the worst part now they accuse my husband as a murderer kill his own father and kill his own niece that is why we are here now we have another place again oh, my husband is just uh, hustling he, he, sometimes we go to alaba and then in the end of the day he just carry 100 naira 200 naira how come we can eat with 200 naira for these kids and every day we need to pay the lodging place. That is why now the day has to pack out. Uh, and we don't have another place again this day. <laughs> My children now since April, they never been in school. They have dropped out because of due to the condition. Because since that time, our condition here. Yeah. How old are your children? This one is uh, 13 years old. And this is uh, 5 years old. Please, my love God, please help us, help my little family. We have been suffering, suffer nothing that is so hard. Even though it is very difficult for please, my love God. And sometimes we don't eat, sometimes we don't eat, we don't eat, sometimes we don't eat. So where is your husband now? I don't know where is he is. He's, uh, he's going out since morning time as usual, hustling himself and he knows that uh, he, there is no place again to stay. Then I, I just decided uh, I cannot live like this again. I cannot live like this again. It's enough for us. When was the last time you saw your husband? It's in the morning. My name is Frederick. I was born in Indonesia. Then we come to Nigeria. Frederick Eggers. So since that time, me and my mother and my sister are always suffering every time. Sometimes we don't, we cannot eat. 
it on times we cannot eat. We don't know what to do again. In the village, they accuse my father of um, killing somebody. That's why this is the problem that makes us to come to Lagos today. That's why we are here. Food is very hard for us, very hard. Before we eat, <laughs> we have go out of our house because of accusing me, accusing my father of killing somebody why he did not kill anybody <sighs> our hotel now we don't have money we are owing them <laughs> so they have sent us out they are telling us to pack out because of we have not paid them the money the money we owe them is a lot since two months now we have been in Lagos and to eat is very hard my daddy I don't know where my daddy is he went out since morning he never come back he used to go to Alaba um, to go and be helping people so that they will give him money it's the only thing he used to do sometimes he will come back with empty and dead he will not hold any money then he will not eat he will just sleep till the next day yeah, he, every time we'll be owing people. Now we have a lot of debts to pay. We owe a lot of people here now. So why have you come here today to the Synagogue Church of All Nations? We come here just to seek the help of man of God, for him to help us. We are in need now. We need him to help us. Um, our bag, because the other bag, they seize it. They seize it because we have not paid the hotel this thing. The hotel lodging. That's why they see it. So this thing is the only bag we use and manage and come out. My sister clothes, my mother and my own clothes and and a blanket here. So these are the only things you have for you and your family? Yes. The only thing we have. I come with my own passport, but my two kids, they don't have any ID with them right now. It's only me. I have my own passport. Okay, can we see your documents? Yes, of course. This is my passport. Only me that have this passport. Because that time when we come to Nigeria, we just using the travel certificate. Since then, uh, they don't have any idea again, only me. We don't have any money because since we, we stay in Nigeria, nothing that is working for us, nothing, just nothing at all. Please, we are coming here because we know there is solution in this very place, synagogue church all of, all of nation. We know, we used to see on TV that man of God used to help people. That is why this is our last bus stop. And I believe that man of God, our case he will not run from you. I believe you will help us. I believe you will help us. I don't even have my one naira with me now as I'm talking. I don't have it. Even my kids now, they never eat this afternoon. Only the small breakfast akamo we eat, uh, we drink it this morning. That is it. Please, man of God. Please help us. Help us. This is our last boss stop and I believe you can help us to settle our problem. Please, may God open your heart and see our case in Jesus' name. My name is Bliss. My dad is Mohammed. She went to Alaba. She is looking for money. No food. Money. We no have money. The first thing the Emmanuel TV team did on hearing their pitiful plight was to take them in, give them a good hot meal and something to drink and a place to stay the night. Our first response as Christians is love. No matter what situation we find ourselves in or what situation we are presented with, we should love first and walk in the light of love. Love is the greatest because God is love. Let's put our hands together beautifully for the miracle walking God.
That was the documentation that took place the very first day this family arrived the Synagogue Church of All Nations premises helpless and the Synagogue Church of All Nations um, team, Emmanuel TV team listening for their cry accommodated them and also fed them and ever since then they've been living within the Synagogue Church of All Nations premises up to date and they are here live and direct so let everywhere be silent as we'll be privileged right now to hear from them live and direct and God bless you as you listen in Jesus name so madam welcome you in Jesus name we just watch the clips of how you arrived we just tell us your life story starting from your name and also introduce those who are standing next to you my name is Christy Pua I'm from Indonesia I'm 37 years old these uh, they are my children Frederick and Blessing uh, 13 years and this is five years and the man standing beside them is uh, John Kennedy Agassi my husband <laughs> my story is goes like this <laughs> I, I want to look some I want to look I, I need help from man of God that is why we come to to synagogue church all of nation on Friday we don't have any place to 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 stay uh, we are before we are we are we, we are lodging in the in the hotel then uh, after much much we cannot be able to 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 pay the hotel again then that very day, fateful day when we came uh, we are be moving around looking a place you know then finally i decide to come to 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 synagogue okay we know we saw briefly um, how you arrived at the synagogue church of all nations premises and also how emmanuel tv team received you uh, we quite saw that on the screen could you just tell us your story how it all started your life experience so far how you met your husband and how you've been catering for your children what have been the difficulties you've been facing just calm down and explain yourself properly so that people of god can see how serious your case is I was met with my husband in Indonesia about 16 years ago when he was uh, doing business in my country. Then, uh, since that time, uh, we have been uh, married. Then this my my son Frederick. He was born uh, in Jakarta, and this one was born in uh, Pakistan. Okay, as you heard it from the woman, she said she met her husband in Indonesia 16 years ago and they got married and there she gave birth to her first son who is Frederick by name and is 13 years old in Jakarta Indonesia and also she had the second baby right there in Pakistan okay after uh, some years our our marriage now my husband decide to bring us to Nigeria to see the parents then I don't know that since we are coming in Nigeria, everything is just turn around, turn around, very bad for us. Nothing that is working for us until this extent. We are very, very so far. Okay, you heard it from the woman that after they got married in Indonesia, the husband came up with the opinion that he should come back home so that he could introduce his family, his wife and children to his family members here in Nigeria. And that was how they came back to Nigeria. And she said ever since then, they've been living from hand to mouth and they've been facing serious suffering. Things are not working out at all. And she said according to her, she never expected to witness all this kind of suffering here in Nigeria yeah i never i never imagined that this sofa in nigeria is too much for me even every day i must cook in the firewood i must go and fetch firewood in the in the booth around the compound it's not enough only that one sometimes the one that i have gathered i will tell my my son to go and sell it only to to ask for for get money okay she said she said ever since then she never expected the kind of difficulties she and her children and her husband have been going through the first and foremost because of the terrible difficulties she has been going through every morning she has to go to the bush to fetch firewood and after fetching the firewood she has to give some to her son to go around the street and start selling them in order to make money for them to meet their daily needs not only firewood uh, sometimes when there is season for abuli i just go and pick the abuli in the compound 
and be cleaning it and uh, selling it. I will send my, my, my son to go to market and sell the, the abuli or if there is unko, I will clean and I go t I will send him to, to, to sell it in the market. All those things I do is to help for me to eat and my children. Okay, if I had a woman, she had experience for you to know how terrible the suffering has been so far in their lives. She said it got to a stage whereby she had to go to the uh, dustbin area to pick some items and also gather them and to make some sales. She also said she was into a petty business she was doing. She would give to her son to go to the market to sell, all in the name of making enough money to take care of herself and the children. Yet, nothing was coming out of the whole thing she was doing. Not only me that is so far, even my son, the worst part, uh, he used to go in the, in the uh, those bin only to pick bottles, pick tins, and some other things for him to sell. All the way he do is only to help me to earn small, small money from it. She further said that as young as this son is, 13 years old, because of the suffering and the terrible situation, difficulties they were going through, the son will go to the refuse dump and pick some bottles and go to the market and make some sales and will come back with stipends just for them to take care of themselves on daily basis. And yet, it will not be enough to cater for the family. And they have, uh, they have dropped out from school since long time because even for us to eat is very di difficult not to talk of uh, taking them to school. As your father said, the husband has no job, he has nothing to do in, and she also has nothing to do in, and they have been suffering all this while. The children, because of these difficulties, are not going to school. They have been dropped out of school for a long time because of the difficulty and financial difficulties and financial constraint they have be going through. All this stuff I have been through for the past five years in Nigeria is not enough because our, our condition is getting worse time by time until the extent when, when my, my father-in-law died. They accused my husband that killed my father-in-law. Then after a after few, few months, the, the niece died. And they also accused my husband that he killed the niece. I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Since that time before he was sad, but now he's become more tough again. More tough than before. Then I'm she said the situation became worse after her, her father-in-law died. And the whole uh, accusing finger was pointed at the husband that he was the cause of the father's death. And also the, the, her in-laws also died and also accused the husband to be the cause of the death. And ever since then, the po pointing of accusing finger has been on her and the entire family. That the reproach has been so much, the stigma has been so much in the entire family. For the past five years they arrived in Nigeria, they've been living from hand to mouth and the situation has been getting worse and worse on a daily basis. <laughs> All those things that happen, I cannot bear any longer again. I tell my husband every day, every day, I'll be pleading to him, please, I don't want to lose our life in this very village, so I still want to live. I have lived my country for so many years, and I still have my family there. I don't want to, to return only by name. It's better we secure our life with anything that we can gather, we sell it, until the extent we, we need to, to sell our television and general only for us to get transport to go Lagos to secure our life. As she further said, because the situation had become so terrible and unbearable to her and the entire family, she beckoned on the husband, it's time for us to make headway out of the village. And she said the only thing they had was a generator and a fridge and some house equipment. They have to sell this uh, generator and also have equipment in order to find their way to Lagos. And that was how they were able to make their way to Lagos Af after selling the last thing they had in the house. And they were able to find their way to the Lagos. That is why we are here in Lagos with all the suffering from village we are running then when we reach in Lagos we still suffering again. That's why it makes us to come to this synagogue to look for help from man of God. Please man of God, man of God please help me and my family. I want to go back to my country. I don't want to live in Nigeria again. Five years is enough for me. Please man of God. You heard it from the woman. She further explained that left to her, she believed that leaving the village and coming down to Lagos would have brought a great relief 
from the terrible situation they were going through in the husband's village. But on getting to Lagos, she said the situation became worse. The suffering continued. And she's now appealing to the man of God and the entire synagogue of all nations to help her so that she can go back to her country, Indonesia, that the suffering is so much she's unbearable anymore. <laughs> man of God. How come I can continue to live like this? I don't want and I cannot, I cannot because even this cross I wear, my children cross that I want is somebody that is giving for us. Think about that kind of level of life and I don't want, I don't want again, please man of God. She further explained that after arriving here in Lagos, that the clothes she's putting on and the one her son and her daughter are putting on, they were given to them by kind-hearted people around. That she have, they have nothing as they are standing here and they want the man of God to please come to their aid so that they can travel back to their country. As we can see on the screen of the television a moment ago, that was the, video, the clips to really show how she was suffering then. That was when she was right in the bush, gathering some firewood in order to cater for the family. Yet, the suffering still continued. So, madam, I just want to ask you a question. You said you left, you told your husband to sell his fridge and his generator and some other little things you have in the house so that you can make your way to Lagos, believing that things will work out well. But on getting here in Lagos, the situation becomes worse. Can you tell us what your husband has been doing here in Lagos? Yeah, since we are rich in Lagos, my husband, he tried to hustle. He go to Alaba every morning. All the way he's still hustling to, to, to get some money for us to eat. But after much more, often time, my husband only returned with 100, 200. The highest is 500. And what can we, we, we can we use that money for, for eat or to pay the accommodation? You heard it from the woman that she thought they are coming to Lagos will have brought a great relief to the suffering and difficult situations the entire family have been going through. But when they arrived in Lagos here, it became worse. The husband started moving from one place to another, trying to hustle to take care of the family. Yes, the situation became worse. And the husband would go out in the morning and come back late night, or to come home with 100 naira, sometimes 200 naira, and the maximum amount of money will come back with a day, or sometime in a day is 500 naira. And she's not saying this money could not even take care of her husband or take care of her, let alone the children. And the suffering is still too much. And the man of God, to not prophet TV Joshua to come to their aid. Man of God, please help my family. I want to return to my place. I don't want to stay in Nigeria, please. Okay, right now, let's hear from your son. Let's hear from your son who believe me have one or two things to say. My name is Frederick. This is my mother, my sister, and my father. Since the day when we come to Nigeria, we have been suffering every time to the extent that I will go to the bush and be picking things to sell <laughs> bottles <laughs> and other things. Those were my mother. <laughs> you heard it from the little boy. He said in order to really assist the family, it has to go to the bush, uh, dustbin, to pick bottle and other items, gather them together and take them to the market to sell. Yet, nothing comes out of it. And you can see him even shedding tears for you to know how terrible the situation has been in the entire family. I'm not going to school. Even my sister, she's not going to school. Nobody is going to school. We have been dropped out for a long time. You heard it from the boy. If I explained that ever since they've been going through this difficult situation, that he and his little sister have not been going to school at all. They've been staying at home because their parents could not afford their school fees and they could not even take care of the entire family. I want man of God to help us so that we go out from this country. We are so far lost. Please, man of God, help us. He heard a little boy crying that he wants the man of God, Senior Prophet TB Joshua, to assist them that the suffering is so much is now unbearable. Okay, right now, let's hear from your father. A man uh, 
Emmanuel. My name is John, Ke John Kennedy Egesi. I'm from Omonolo, Imo State. So, on. Um, okay, the people next to me is my wife, my son, and my little daughter. So, on. Um, we, we are living in abroad for a long time. After a short while, I decided to bring my family home. When I now bring my family home, everything is fine oh, before I come home and uh, so on. Then, but uh, all of a sudden, when I come home, things turn around. Things started being bad, nothing is working out, and so on and so forth. I decide, uh, to an extent even, they accuse me that I killed my father, which my father that my wife and uh, taken care of with my mom. How can I kill my father? They accuse me and give me so many insults, name calling and all what not. Then the insult is too much, we cannot help it anymore. We decide to come, come to Lagos. Uh, we managed to sell our generator and television and uh, some things we use in the day, we managed to come to Lagos. Then we come to Lagos, as we come to Lagos, we decide that we try to find a place that will pay in a little money, like 1,005, to stay. So when we stay there, we'll be paying 1,005 every day, things get worse and worse. Then I decide to be going to Alaba to hustle, to help some people in business or something like that. So along the line, nothing is still not working out. If I'm coming back sometimes, you know, they maybe they give me after much, much, I get like 200 or 500, highest 1,000. At that extent, I can't be able to pay for the house rent again. Like that, even sometimes we we'll sleep without eating. So that is how things ups and down, you know, it's been stressful and uh, uh, too much on my side. Then on uh, Friday, I was trying to get home. I was on the way, but I was trekking by leg because sometimes I can be able to pay for bus. Sometimes when I enter the bus, they push me down. Then I tried to trek by leg. I was in um, a place they call a uh, gondo. Then I received a call around 12 o'clock. Uh, then it happened that there is an evangelist calling me from a uh, synagogue church of our nation. I said, what is the problem? They said they found my wife and my kid in the street. I said, what is happening? They said they cried, they never ate and all what not. I shed tears. From there I managed to get to this very place. I want to first of all thank man of God to take care of my wife to uh, since that Friday to uh, this very... <sighs> You can see how pathetic the situation is, uh, but we quite understand that it hasn't been easy at all, but let us listen attentively. I want to first of all to thank man of God of taking care of my wife since that very Friday to this very moment. I want to thank him so much. So from that time reach now, this is how we are. So this is how I come will come to Synagogue Church of All Nation. Okay, um, our brother, we have heard you quite clear, and we could deduce from your expression how terrible and pathetic your situation has been for quite a long time right now. I will believe you and your entire family have come to the arena of liberty, and your case will not escape the blessing of the Lord. So, but we just want to we want to hear from you because people want to learn. Uh, you said the situation has been very terrible to the extent that you have to go to a place here in Lagos to hustle and yet you could not come back with anything tangible that could not even take care of the entire family, let alone paying for the house rent or the place where you are putting up. I could you tell us, ever since you've been going through this problem, what effort have you made as a man, either to travel out or maybe to hustle, apart from the issue of going to Alaba here, hustling for money, what effort have you made to really take care of this family? So twice we're supposed to travel. Even me, there was a time I traveled, so my wife was troubled. They tell her to go home, this is not your place, this and that, like that. My phone rang, I was about boarding flight to travel. 
You know, I asked her what is happening. He said nothing. They just start troubling her. I said, okay, drop. I call you back. Then I call her back. He said they have left her, but they're still talking and disturbing her. Then that journey, I went that very journey, they did to send me back. So from that very period, I'm in the ground. If not, we have tried twice to move together with them. Nothing is happening out. Okay, could you just make your statement clear in that area? You say you travel back and they send you back. What do you really mean? They deported me. You know, I wasn't focusing as I'm going because of the call. You know now, international movement. Okay, eventually your effort to really travel out for Greener Pacho for the entire family was frustrated because of the deportation. Yes. Eh? Yes. Okay. So, so now, even before ever we come back, this was moving fine. I used to see my family as my loving one. I used to show love and so on and so forth. All of a sudden, this is not moving well. Then everybody gets turned around the turn against me. So that is how it is. Then that's why we decide to come to Lagos. But I still thank man of God of the little help he give to my wife. And I still begging him if he can help and help my wife to so that they will be fine and help them so that they can be able to achieve what they want from man of God. My own is different. There's no problem. I'm in Nigeria. You can see how the man really felt for the family. If I may explain what it really meant, you know, being the head of the family, a married man, He's not happy at all seeing his children and the wife suffering. And he's also pleading for help, asking the man of God, Senior Prophet TB Joshua, that he really appreciates whatever he can do to help his wife and the children. And we really thank God Almighty for this moment. And we believe the man of God will definitely come to your aid because God has sent him to help those who are less privileged. And you're not the first person I've been helping, and you're not going to be, be the last person. He's sent to this world to help the, need, the needy, and that's what you continue to do, because that's part of his ministry, to spend more on others and less on himself. And he's always selfless in his activities, as we all know. So we believe uh, we're going to hear from the man of God very soon, and whatever the man of God is going to do, we'll be able to assist you and take you out of the problem you're facing, and also wipe away your tears in Jesus' name. Escuchamos esta conmovedora experiencia de esta familia, ella es de Indonesia y él es de Nigeria, han estado casados por más de 16 años y vivían en Indonesia, decidieron regresar aquí a Lagos, Nigeria y todo en su vida cambió. Él fue acusado falsamente de que había asesinado a su padre y todas las puertas de sus negocios se cerraron. Ahora ellos han venido aquí a la sinagoga iglesia de todas las naciones en busca de ayuda, puesto que lo que tienen puesto en este momento es la única pertenencia que ellos tienen. Ellos tuvieron que vender el televisor, las pocas pertenencias que tenían para poder llegar a este lugar y hacer un clamor de ayuda al hombre de Dios. Nous allons entendre le merveilleux témoignage de cette femme, famille, cette femme qui vient de l'Indonésie avec ses deux enfants et son mari qui vient du Nigeria. Nous avons entendu qu'elle est venue à la porte de la synagogue église de toute nation cette semaine, pleurant parce qu'elle a dit que justement depuis quelque temps, elle et son mari sont en train de souffrir énormément, qu'il n'y a pas d'argent, qu'il n'y a pas de nourriture sur la table. Ils vivaient très bien en Indonésie avant de venir ici au Nigeria et aussi ils ont construit une maison au village où ils habitaient avec les parents de son mari. Et lorsque les parents de son mari sont morts, son mari a été accusé d'avoir tué ses parents et c'est comme cela que le village était contre eux, ils ont dû s'enfuir du village pour arriver à Lagos. Et en arrivant à Lagos, pensant qu'ils allaient trouver justement un, un terrain fructueux, cela a été le, le contraire, elle a dit que le mari n'a aucun travail, des fois il va, il sort le matin, il revient le soir juste avec 100 ou 200 naira, au maximum 500 naira, cela n'est pas suffisant pour payer justement la location de l'hôtel ou aussi de mettre de la nourriture sur la table pour toute la famille. Elle a dit qu'ils ont souffert énormément, quand même son fils de 13 ans et elle-même allait souvent dans Dans, les, dans la forêt pour couper du bois, pour vendre du bois, et même aller chercher des choses dans les poubelles pour sortir des bouteilles, des choses euh, valables, valides, 
de la poubelle pour pouvoir vendre sur le marché. C'est comme ça qu'ils ont souffert, mais aujourd'hui, elle dit qu'elle n'en peut plus de cette souffrance, qu'elle demande que l'homme de Dieu, Prophète Yoshua, vienne à son secours avec les enfants, de pouvoir à leurs besoins aussi, de lui permettre de pouvoir rentrer en Indonésie, prendre soin de ses enfants en Indonésie. Et son mari aussi est d'accord pour cela, il demande aussi l'aide du Prophète Yoshua, d'aider sa famille, pour que sa femme et ses enfants puissent rentrer en Indonésie, que lui, étant un Nigérien, il continuera à pouvoir trouver du travail, aussi s'occuper de, de lui-même. Ellos también cuentan la difícil dificultad que han tenido para poder comer. Ella cuenta que el niño ha tenido que ir a basureros para recolectar botellas y cualquier cosa que puedan vender. También han contado que han estado divagando mucho por aquí en Nigeria y no han encontrado ninguna clase de ayuda. Incluso en el hotel que ellos estaban, los corrieron y ellos han sido deportados desde Indonesia. Por eso están aquí en la sinagoga de todas las naciones, haciéndole un llamado muy especial al hombre de Dios para ayudarles.